There's a hush <laughs> all over the crowd today. <laughs> you're not going to you're not going for the voice. I'm sorry. <laughs> you could. <laughs> you could try. <laughs> you never know when they work. America's Got Talent. Yeah. <laughs> I got. Stage right up here, man. We'll dance. No, that's as far as I go. Oh wait, there's another one. Silence is golden, <laughs> but my eyes can see. Can you record this? <laughs> it's recording, yeah. Uh, we we need the five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> we need the, for the person. Oh, boy. <laughs> Good morning. I'd like to call the December 3rd meeting of the City of Punta Gorda Council, City Council, to order. Uh, we will please I'll have the record uh, reflect that all city council members and city officials are present. And now if you'll stand for the invocation and pledge of allegiance. Father in heaven, we come before you this morning to invoke your blessing on what we do here in our capacity as members of the Punta Gorda City Council. We ask your guidance, help in all that we do and say, us that the words of our mouths and the hidden meditations in our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. Furthermore, we ask that you provide guidance to those who support our work, both staff and citizens, and turn their hearts towards right thinking and fairness toward all. All these things we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, John. Well, good morning. Uh, we'll begin with proclamations, and our first proclamation will be read by Vice Mayor Kim Devine. Thank you. My pleasure. Proclamation, City of Punta Gorda, Florida. Whereas the Board of Directors of the Charlotte County Chamber of Commerce, Inc. recognize the importance of supporting the growth of our local com economy, and whereas purchasing cars, boats, consumer goods, gifts, and other products and services in Charlotte County can contribute greatly to local growth, with each dollar spent returning to our economy, and whereas the goal of Shop Charlotte is to strengthen opportunities and jobs and the general prosperity of all by asking Punta Gorda residents to plan their next shopping spree right here at home. Now therefore the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida does hereby proclaim November 28, 2014 through December 24, 2014 is Shop Charlotte Month in the city of Punta Gorda and encourages consumers to make every effort to support local merchants and stores within Charlotte County by Shopping Charlotte. Passed and duly adopted in regular session this third day of December 2014, city of Punta Gorda, Florida, Carolyn Freeland, Mayor. And accepting is Julie Mathis. Oh, Wendy. <laughs> Thank you, I'm Wendy Atkinson with Atlas Insurance and also president of the Charlotte County Chamber of Commerce and I do urge everybody to spend your, spend your money locally. We have some amazing shops, buy some gift certificates for restaurants and please don't forget your favorite charities during this holiday season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And our next proclamation will be read by Council Member Nancy Prafke. <laughs> All right. Um, whereas the Charlotte County Chamber of Commerce is devoted to enriching the business, civic, and cultural aspects of Charlotte County, and whereas the Christmas season has been traditionally celebrated with the Chamber-sponsored Christmas Parade for citizens and visitors to the community, and whereas the theme of Christmas through the eyes of a child brings about pleasant memories of hearth and home from many locales, and whereas the parents of little ones should note the one and only Mr. S. Claus will travel thousands of miles to attend the historic event in the beautiful city of Punta Gorda, and whereas the 33rd annual Christmas parade will commence at 12 noon 
on the afternoon of December 6, 2014. Now, therefore, the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida does hereby proclaim Saturday, December 6, 2014, as Charlotte County City of Punta Gorda Christmas Parade, to Christmas Parade Day and urges all citizens to share in the fun at the Christmas Parade. Passed and duly adopted in regular session this third day of December, 2014, City of Punta Gorda, Florida, Carolyn Thielen Mayor. And Julie Mathis is accepted. <laughs> I'm Julie Mathis, Executive Director of the Charlotte County Chamber of Commerce. The parade will step off at noon on Saturday from Charlotte High School. It will go north on Taylor and disband at the Event Center. The reviewing stand is in front of Centennial Bank, so make sure you get, early, get there early, put out your chairs, and then come downtown, go to the farmer's market and do some shopping before the parade starts. We look forward to seeing the city council members and uh, Howard, Mr. Kunick, on his bike. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Julie. We will now adjourn the City Council meeting and uh, begin our CRA meeting, our Community Development Agency. Oh, before we do that, are there any individuals that wish to um, introduce themselves who are nominated for a committee? Okay, seeing none, then we will adjourn. Thank you. And now we'll call the CRA meeting to order. Uh, first, we'll begin with citizens' comments, and those will be on any of the items that are on our agenda related to the CRA, uh, the minutes, our status report for December, the appraisal of retail space in Harrow Court Center, and the invoice for Icard, Merrill, Cullis, Tim, Buren, and Ginsburg. Are there any citizens who wish to make a comment? No comments. We will begin then with uh, approval of the minutes. Move approval. Second. Second. Been moved and approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 M minutes are passed. Uh, the CRA project status report. Mr. Kunick. Howard Kunick, CRA director. The marina is full, uh, continues to be full. Um, you see the pump out boats. Actually eight non-Florida vessels, 52 from Florida. And the community room is uh, quite active. So, uh, and we even have, still have 15 liverboards. Um, it's, it's packed. How is the um, reconstruction going in the building with the water leak? Is it still ongoing or is it finished? The, um, the, the window treatment things um, finally got done. So they should be putting that in and then we'll test it again. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, it works. Um, are you going to status us on the, the projects that we approved? Yeah. So that we can? Yeah, we will. Okay. Yeah, we will. Um, the repurposing of the restrooms is, I think, next in line. But yeah, we'll give you, when there's some activity to show, it'll show up in the next month's report. This, okay. this report here, this month is weak. It's, it's pretty weak. <laughs> I, I, just, I just thought maybe you just hop right on it and they'd get, get the stuff done. Yeah, we're slacking. <laughs> we're slacking, we gotta get things going. Well, now that the sales tax has passed, we should eventually have some more things to show. Veterans Park. Um, they're still moving along. Um, they got some fundraisers coming up, so. And, and uh, tomorrow, mayor's going to present to the legislative delegation uh, re our request for appropriation. We did send a letter to the county asking them to support our request. Community park uh, bids are under review. The winning bid, if it, if it's shown that it's the winning bid, it's under my authority to sign, so hopefully we can get that project moving. That's for the Tribune Woods neighborhood, MLK in Virginia. Harbor Walk West, um, they're now, uh, engineers now proceeding to 90% plans. 
So that actually is moving along for our grant guidelines. Um, that's it. That's it's, it. It's Any not, questions? Not very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll look for more excitement in the future. But uh, at least well, we, we better get going on some of these projects. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking forward to it. Okay. Thank you, Howard. We'll now uh, move on to the next item on our agenda, which is the appraisal of retail space in Herald Court Center. Um, before we go over that, um, City Attorney will give you an update on Morgan Stanley. Thank you. Yeah, I'll provide some excitement. I, I had a very co um, constructive conversation yesterday with the attorneys for Morgan Stanley. Um, as you know, we asked them to uh, put their specific requests uh, into an addendum that we'll, we can include uh, in the standard form lease. They understood um, where we were coming from. I anticipate that they will be doing that in the very near future, and, um, and so it's, uh, it's, it's looking very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Howard, with that uh, space uh, reserved now for Morgan Stanley, how much space do we have left? Um, well, there's about, what, about 5,000 square feet? Okay. 2,500 uh, left to be developed, and then you have... Do you want to come up to the microphone, please? I'm estimating about 5,000. Is that close? Yeah. yeah. Lindsay Harrington, for the record, uh, Coal Banker Residential Real Estate. Uh, you have about 2,500 remaining outside of what Morgan Stanley has, has requested uh, to be reserved for them and is currently under negotiation. And then you have uh, roughly 1,400 in the former uh, just riding along uh, the bicycle shop, which faces onto uh, 41 North. And then you have about 1,670 square feet in the former ceramic uh, uh, shop. And uh, that has had uh, quite a bit of uh, in interest here in the last uh, two, three weeks. We've had uh, three prospects looking at it. Wonderful. One yesterday, uh, who probably may be at this meeting today, Thank you. So, Thank you. We, uh, Lindsay, a question. We, we should be approximately 50%, if Morgan goes through with everything, we should be about 50% rented in building number two. Is that approximately right? Pretty close. About 45%, roughly. Yeah. That's a pretty good number. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. So, um, we went out for appraisals. You have the uh, appraisal report. Um, I think as a CRA, we need to have a, a discussion on policy, really. Um, and that is, do we as a CRA want to just put the uh, 13,000 square foot retail space area out for sale uh, on the market? Um, whether we get the uh, price from the appraisal range, who knows? Or do we want to retain the status quo? which I'm not sure we do based on our re other discussions, or do we want to um, contract out the leasing to an agent and, and, have, and give the responsibility for that agent to be able to negotiate and sign leases and not have to come back to you, when you have, with our pre-established guidelines, and manage those leases I guess, or there's a fourth option that has been brought up, and that is do we just want to um, do like a land lease where we just put out the uh, 13,000 square feet? We, we continue to own the property, but we put it out for uh, proposals to, to anybody who wants to just manage the entire thing, and that is both the leasing and the uh, maintenance, and pay us a fee. In keeping in mind, if we, if we lease out 13,000 square feet at $16 a square foot, that's 12 and 4. If, that, if, if we can accomplish that at some point in time, that's about $208,000 per year coming into the CRA. Okay, thank you. Um, perhaps our first question is, um, are we in agreement that we do not want to stay the status quo? Please. Is it agreed that we do not want to stay at the status quo in which we are hearing the leases yes, in a public mm -hmm. forum? I think we pretty much agreed with that. Okay, time. so we'll, that one is off the board. 
Um, yes. This probably won't go anywhere, but I don't believe government should be in the real estate business, and I would favor and sell it outright. Other comments, concerns? Yes, Tom. I have. We've 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 heard this uh, the possibility of selling the building. Well, my, uh, I know. Okay. We've I've been told that we are, could legally just go out and then sell the building. Uh, I, just, I just don't think that that sounds right. We, you know, to go out and offer for sale an asset of the CRA without at least having a conversation with our, our commissioners about something like that. I think it would be inappropriate for us to do that, whether we can legally do it or not. Yes, Rachel. I'm more inclined to the RFP to get a managed lease, you know, a broker like uh, Howard was saying who could manage the leases. It would still be public record, but we would still have our criteria in place. I think um, whatever that criteria is that we agree on at, at that point and what kind of offers we get, I think it's at least worth exploring to see what kind of response we get back. Yes, Jane. I think that uh, what we do at Lashley Marina works quite well, and I think that that would be uh, the criteria that we should consider. I also can, can think that uh, uh, the CRA should be paying, um, or should be taking care of uh, the uh, CAM so that we can make sure that anybody that feels like it's not well taken care of, if it's uh, getting trash in there, that we are the ones that will be watching it and taking care of it. And as it's turned out, uh, it has been cheaper yes. uh, for us to do that. Yes. So. Yes, Kim. Um, I agree. I think that uh, leasing it uh, like a Lashley Marine type of thing would be good. My, my question is, why are we just doing the 13,000 square feet? Why are we not including where the atelier and the college is? The artisan's atelier is really not uh, it was not built for retail space per se. There's, it's uh, it's perfect for the artists. Okay. Um, it was actually unused space that we made use out of, okay. and that's um, and then FGCU um, is something that we went out there, sought them out, <laughs> and they're here, and we would like to keep them here. Sure. So we've kind of kept that aside. Okay. Yeah. That's more of a community type building. Okay, so we have just that 13,000 square feet. I mean, I would just like to see someone lease the space like Lashley, like Fisherman's Village, who actually market the space, do things, have events there, bring people downtown. It's not, what we're doing is just leasing a space, and if, if, but we're not providing any um, marketing actually for people to actually come down there uh, before nancy did you have yeah i, I would um, tend to agree with that I, I was thinking selling it outright was probably the best thing that we could do but i'm in agreement with um, leasing it out to someone that, trying to get this out of the public domain um, is really an objective of mine so that we allow these business owners to be able to at least operate with some degree of confidentiality um, as far as the, the atelier is concerned, um, if you if you go in that space, you'll you'll see the the ceiling varies in height, and it's um, the area was not flood proofed, right. so therefore um, anything if there, if there was a flood event, that area has to be allowed to flood, and so it can't be leased. FEMA said it can't be leased out as a normal retail space, so that that's why um, the city has had the space, and they said, well, what can we do with it? And that's when Team Panagorda said, well, how about the atelier? And all of the artists that go in there know that. It's part of what they lease. And they don't pay much for right, it right. because no, it was unusable that. space. Okay. All right. Now, I'm, I'm hearing a couple of conflicting things. Tom? Just a, a question. How would we identify uh, marketing versus leasing? Is, is there a contrast that, we, that we're looking at over here in terms of just turning it over to have somebody to lease the space? or turning it over to somebody to market the space. Is, am I hearing a, a difference in? That's, that's no, what I, what I meant was if, if, we, if we leased it to someone like a fisherman's village, I mean, they have a whole business plan that they market that space. I'm saying if we have someone there, they will make it a viable place to have your business, make people want to come there. I mean, if I had a retail, I would go to fisherman's village because they bring millions of people to Fisherman's Village. So I would think we would want someone 
who would look at that as a business and want to make money there. So in that scenario, then, they would be handling all of the maintenance as well? Yes. And then they would be paying us a fee, as Fisherman's Village does, right. just right. as mm -hmm. a, a modest, yes. So would, in that scenario, how, how would the fee work out? Would it be a percentage or would it be a flat fee? I just don't really understand how the financial part for the city would work, so I'm trying to understand that. Howard, can you assist? Um, under that scenario, where we would go out with a RFP request for proposals for firms, whoever it might be, to come in there and take over that area, like a land lease kind of thing. Okay. Um, they would submit a proposal to us that um, said, okay, for us to go ahead and lease up the space and maintain it, I guess, if that's, if you want that uh, as part of it, they would pay us a fee, an annual fee, just like the Crab House, just like Fisherman Village does. I don't know what that would be because we would have to negotiate that, but they would propose a fee. Then it's all theirs. They collect rent, they, 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 they maintain the space, and we get an annual fee. One of the issues that um, I am concerned about, I guess, is the lack of control. Um, Fisherman's Village has handled it in their scenario very well. Crab House has handled it very well. But if the building starts to deteriorate or whatever, again, we have lost control of that, and that's a prime property uh, in our downtown area. So I'm, I'm really conflicted about giving the whole thing over. I like the idea of having a broker lease the space, manage the space, and then I think, as Jane suggested, that we handle the maintenance. Kim? Oh, sorry, Kim. Kim. Oh, um, you know, I'm, I'm almost thinking, and Patty could probably help us out here, because it is 50% leased up already, and mm -hmm, some of mm -hmm. our, you know, as a business person, I don't know that I would be interested in doing that because the rents are so low there, so you're kind of stuck with what we did, which wasn't the optimal thing for a business person. So uh, I think that probably where we are right now, the only thing that we really have to do would be to get someone to manage the property. I mean, we could put it, put it out for RFP and see what comes back. I mean, what does that hurt? Carol? Mm -hmm. Yes. What, what, oh, if we did the RFP for the land lease and we did turn it over to some company and they were going to handle the maintenance, what would happen to all of our investment that we put in for the build out? Would that still stay with the city? Would that now be theirs or we would have, what would we have? Like eventually if we did want to sell it, would we lose some of the investment that we put in as far as the build out? Right now the build out is ours. Right. It's become, it's that. part of the building. Would that change? No, we're not. We're not selling it. We're just having them manage the leases. But then they would. They would also be in charge of managing our assets because yes. we've already made contractual agreements for certain things that are ours, and certain things that are the store owners. That well, I just think the, it would the, get a little bit muddled. I would think. Uh, I, that that would all have to be ironed out in whatever agreement we come up with. But the infrastructure is still with the city. Tom? Yeah, the, the most troubling part that I feel that we have been dealing with is, is the fact that people would have, have to bring back the city council the terms of their lease. And we just, we want to get, I think that we want to be out from underneath hearing that. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we're almost 50% rented out now, I, I'd like to hear from, uh, from Lindsay a little bit, uh, offering his opinion on what he thinks we might do with this. Uh, he's already indicated there is some interest in some other portions of the building. I think if we find a way to get out from under hearing the terms of a lease negotiated in front of City Council and just continue to lease it in, in some similar fashion to what we've been doing, uh, in a short time, hopefully, that uh, the, the, it will be rented and we won't be dealing with this for a while. Mm -hmm. Yes, Nancy. Yeah, I I agree with what Kim said. The business model that we started off with is, is very different from Fisherman's Village. And the rent that, you, that people pay at Fisherman's Village is more because they get so much more than what we have. So it would require then if somebody wanted to, to 
to um, adopt a different business model. It would be renegotiating with the, the current tenants, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and that's going to be difficult. So um, it really it does restrict our options. Yes, the only, the other thing along Tom's line, yeah, we keep thinking if we get 100% rented out, then that's our ideal, but we're still going to have turnover. We're right. still going to have to deal with the turnover of the people that come and go. We've already had to deal with it before. So to not have to deal with that, I think, is ideal. Mm -hmm. So am I hearing then that we have consensus, that we want to um, identify a broker that's going to manage the property, and we retain the maintenance um, also Nancy is that is that what I'm hearing no I I don't know that I really care about the maintenance I mean I, I do care about the maintenance but I don't ne necessarily feel like um, that we have to be that controlling that if we put it in the terms of the lease on what how things have to be maintained if we if we got a property manager they would report to the city anyway and so they would maintain it under our criteria <laughs> so the property manager would just manage the whole thing and if we don't like what they're doing we say so mm -hmm. I mean I really think I, I hate I, I mean I'm open to put it out to bid but I just think we've limited our options having so much of it already leased out mm -hmm. so and we're probably the property management is the only way we can really Oh, I mean, we can put it out there and see what we get, but Nancy, oh, I was going to say, and I, I really wouldn't rule out the possibility of a sale. I mean, it might come down to the fact that that's the best option. So, because um, we might find that we really don't have somebody who wants to lease it and manage it like that. So, Kim, if we got an offer of 2.4, would we sell it? That would, that would be the nice yes. thing. Be <laughs> well, then, then I think we should put it out. Why not put it out there? I mean, if we get that offer, we don't have to take any offer. Do we that need we don't permission want. from the commissioners? I mean, no, okay. no, 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 not, I mean, we not could for this. Add, we're know, just, we can talk to them. And it's just a, we're just continuing to lease out the space. It has well, not I'm talking about, we're about if we talking about selling it. it. Oh, we're talking about selling it. Yeah. I, I said, yeah, if we can, no, you walked away. Turn your back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Everything yeah. changes in a minute. The, um, <laughs> the, the reason why I don't think we need uh, the county commission to approve that is because we would take the proceeds and retire debt. debt. Right. Okay. Oh. Okay. Then what's the benefit of, uh, to the city of, of selling it? I mean, if, we, if, if, if it's going to be rented out and in the next 15 years, we're going to recover it, two and a half million dollars. What's what's the benefit to sell it? In I, my mind, if I, I if I can, the benefit to sell it is to have someone, an owner who will do what Fisherman's Village did and what Lashley, somebody who's going to bring a, a bunch of prosperous businesses there. We don't have that ability to do that. I mean, we're just renting space that's mm -hmm. and the people are going there and they're on their own. When you move into a mall situation or a, a, that type of thing, you have the marketing, you have people who are helping you be successful. That's not what we're doing. So we have a bunch of retail spaces like, okay, well, go ahead, move in there and see if you can make it. Mm -hmm. We don't have the expertise to help them succeed. And you don't so, think a property manager would do that? Uh, if we tell them to, but no. I don't know that we can afford that kind of property manager. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, I mean, I, for the rents we're getting, I mean, we're, we're not going to make any money that way. Yes, Rachel. Is there any way to um, open this up more broad when we do put out an RFP to ask for those, both of those scenarios? Yes, she's shaking her head yes. Mm -hmm. Just to ask, see we what we get. Anybody. See what we right. get. Right. That's Either the, the land lease idea or the property management idea to see what comes back. Or, or the sale. sale. Or a sale. sale. <laughs> we include all of them? I would also caution that, that when you look at the appraisal that we got, um, there are two different ways this was calculated. And, and I had a conversation with someone who's in the commercial lending business. And the, the fee simple is based on other sales in a broad geographic area that includes Bonita Springs, which is very different than Punta Gorda. When you look at the leased fee, it's the value is placed on what is the rental income right. 
and it's a much narrower area, which is right. more like what we are. Mm -hmm. So um, the 2.4 may be pipe dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe a really best case scenario, and the the least fee value might um, be more realistic. And in, in, in that one, um, the assumption was that then the tenants are going to pay all of their fees. There was another scenario where the tenants didn't pay the fees, and, um, and it was like 1.3. Mm -hmm. So there were, there's a range there of, of values. What is yes, Tom? I, I just wonder, if we were 75% rented out in that building, and we no longer had to deal with listening to the details of a lease. Would we be having this conversation? We can listen to Lindsay and see if this. Lindsay, do you have any comments? Tom, forgive me for standing up when you made comment earlier. Uh, I, I think the biggest challenge that we've had is, and I'm going to be you know, real blunt about this, is the foot traffic uh, in the facility. Uh, and it's we got to get people in there and and our base rent is 12 bucks uh, a square foot plus cam for uh, that's it's pretty pretty close to what I think the market is downtown uh, we have a building just uh, Ron Struthers and I have a building just a, a quarter of a block away at eleven dollars a square foot about 2200 square feet high traffic intersection and uh, we're having difficulty filling that and it's a 10-year-old building, and it's in good condition. I mean, it's uh, what I call a Class B uh, building, okay, with double entrances and uh, ground floor. And, uh, and so and downtown does have a challenge, and it's basically parking. I think the, the building itself and the parking, uh, you know, it contributes to the downtown a lot. Uh, the challenge uh, I've had is that people uh, can't park out front and walk into the store. But yet again, they'll park down, uh, you know, half a block, a block away, and walk to a to a restaurant to dine. You know, so it's 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 what people think and how they think. Uh, I think our greatest challenge has been, other than the foot traffic, has been the fact uh, that we have to have a review before city council and debate every little point. Well, excuse me, we don't date, debate every little point. Howard, you know, works it as best he can. And uh, then we bring it to you when we think we have a final, uh, final understanding between two parties. And we've been told the ones that have walked away saying that they can't come to a decision. Howard says, if you want to push the issue, you can bring it to council and let council make that final decision. So Howard has never shut the door on everyone. He's left that door wide open so that you can make that final decision. Uh, but I think basically, as I've said, washing our laundry in public has, has harmed us. And I think Tom is dead on about we need to get it out of this arena and get it into some private hands. Uh, I think uh, uh, you know, Kim's concept is, is fresh. Uh, but it, and I think putting it in the hands of a broker and giving him sole authority to do something is fine. Uh, but Kim's thought on, on leasing it to someone and then letting them sublet back out. Uh, and you take a stipend, uh, a flat fee, and, uh, and a percentage of probably what they take in is not a bad idea. But you need to be able to review that and you need to be able to watch what they do and it needs to be available to the public, in my opinion, because that really ultimately is, you know, a building that belongs to, to the people of Charlotte County and the city of Punta Gorda. Uh, so, uh, again, some sort of a leasing scenario is I think the great, greatest way to go about it. Uh, I have this, this listing currently exposed on three different internet systems, our local MLS, uh, internet uh, via LoopNet, and also through my Florida commercial real estate, uh, which runs from Daytona Beach all the way to Tampa, Pasco, and down to Charlotte County. And so it's, it's getting exposure, it gets hit, but it just doesn't get somebody walking in. Carolyn? Yes, Rachel. I just want to make sure if we do change direction that Lindsay is made whole for all the work that he's done and any. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, you know. But uh, again, as I made comment to Howard earlier on, the biggest thing right now is we've got a three year project. Three years we've been working with Morgan Stanley. They've, I've shown that building to them over and over every year. And they finally have come around to making a proposal. And we, whatever we do here today, 
please caution, be cautious about making some kind of decision that will end up in the paper and be seen by somebody and New York City will suddenly do a knee jerk. We got to, you know, we got to be very careful about this. We don't want to give an appearance of, of, uh, of walking away and from what we're currently doing and I'm sure your attorney will be, be cautious in talking with people and making them alert what we're doing right now. As far as we're concerned, Morgan Stanley, I mean, they've submitted building plans, so we're reviewing building plans. So we're we're, we're 90, 90 yeah. some percent there right now. Yeah. We just got to refine the, the lease right now and come to some understanding on that. Okay, Jim. And uh, is it possible that you just you act as the broker and you guys just decide and you don't bring it to council? You could do that a scenario. Give give Howard and I. A, a parameter and we'll put it together and Har Howard would be spending the time <laughs> negotiating it. He and I will Sorry, be. Sorry, <laughs> Howard. Yeah. I, I think I would, my preference would be to eliminate it completely in terms of the lease situation. Um, I like the idea of maintaining the maintenance only because it costs us less to do it that way than to have the broker handle it and then charge us for that maintenance. I wonder if it, from what I've heard this morning, if it would be appropriate to continue this in progress till the January meeting for us, let you get this Morgan Staniel out of the way. We, we're we hoping we, our, their goal is to have it done and <laughs> what they've stated to me uh, is within a couple of weeks, have it over with. They want to start working on that building. In January. Yeah, they're, they're uh, going to do it. Yeah. I mean, they're there. That may not be a bad idea. Yeah, I, I would be okay with yeah. that. I would be okay with that. I would move that we delay this for uh, till the January meeting for further discussion. Is that a motion? Mm -hmm. That's it's a motion. Been, motion has been made and seconded. Any other discussion on that? That would be the final decision. You can still continue any debate discussion right now. That's what you're saying. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the, thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Lindsay. Yes, thank you for all thank of the work you, that you've been yes. doing. We appreciate it. Thank you. And we do want to see Morgan Stanley. So, uh, The next item on the uh, CRA agenda is the invoice. Move approval. Second. Moved and uh, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes unanimously. All right, we have citizen comments on the CRA agenda. Any citizen comments? Hearing none, we'll move on to commissioner comments. Uh, Rachel? Just happy holidays to Frank and Jane. I probably won't see you, so see you in 2015. Oh my yes. goodness. Tom? Next year, yes, thank you. That's it, no comment. Thank you, and have a happy holiday. Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah. Happy holidays. Thank you, Jane. Jane said it perfectly. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to all. Okay. Uh, same. You guys have a nice holiday. Thank you. Thank you. Ditto. <laughs> we'll make it unanimous. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank okay. you all. Thank, Thank you. you. We adjourned. We'll, we'll see you in January. January. You bet. Do this again. Sounds good. <laughs> it's fun. Oh, we'll see you somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> few minutes before we re-adjourn. As the City Council and we first have a public hearing on CP0214. Yes, this is the first reading of an ordinance which I'll read by title only. An ordinance of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida adopting an amendment to the City of Punta Gorda, Florida Comprehensive Plan 2025 for the purpose of amending the capital improvement element to update and revise text, including the five-year capital improvements program as required annually by the state statute, providing for conflict and severability and providing an effective date. Uh, comments from staff? David Hurlston, Urban Design Manager. Uh, this is our annual update. It's a bureaucratic measure at best. So. Okay. Are there any questions <laughs> or comments? Do we have a motion then? Oh, to have a public hearing. Public hearing. <laughs> oh, that's right, it's a public hearing. Anyone wishing to make comments on CP0214? Second call? 
Anyone wishing to make comments? Move to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, the motion passes to close the public hearing. Do we have a motion then to approve? I just have a, a comment. If yes. You uh, in the document, someplace you, you have a reference to uh, Edison College that needs to be changed to uh, Southwest Florida? Yes, and that was one uh, change that was actually called at Planning Commission as well. Okay. We've made the changes on the second reading. You'll see that reflected in your package. I just wanted you all to know I read that home. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Would you like to make a motion? Make a motion to approve CP 02-14. Second. Second. Okay. The, uh, it has been moved and seconded to approve CP 02-14. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It passes. Thank you. You have to excuse us. We're still getting used to our tablets, so it takes a little while to move things along. All right, we're moving on now to GA 1014. Yes, this is the first reading of an ordinance, which I'll read by title only. An ordinance of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, amending the Punta Gorda Code, Chapter 9, Public Nuisances, Article 1, Generally, Section 9-6, Notices, Paragraph A1, Providing for Notices to be Sent by Certified Mail with Optional Return Receipt Requested Service, amending the Punta Gorda Code, Chapter 9, Article Roman Numeral 2, Mandatory Lot Mowing Program, Section 9-7, the program, Paragraphs D, F1, and K, removing the requirement for notices to be sent, excuse me, notices to be mailed, return receipt requested, amending the Punta Gorda Code, Chapter 9A, Code Enforcement, Article 1, General, Section 9A-7, Conduct of Hearing, Paragraph, I believe it's L, removing re requirement for notices to be mailed, return receipt requested, Many of the Punta Gorda Code, Section 9A-9, Notices, Paragraph A-1, providing for notices to be sent certified mail with optional return receipt requested service, providing for conflict and severability and providing an effective date. Um, there was a, a, a legislative change in the uh, Code Enforcement Statute, Chapter 162, this past uh, legislative session, which um, gave us the option of uh, either requiring return receipts for our certified mail notices um, or dispensing with that requirement uh, uh, in the um, so as to allow local governments to save a little bit of money in, in costs. Um, many of our, our uh, quasi-judicial proceedings, um, I think we would still be pursuing the option of having the return receipt so that we can demonstrate uh, in some of those hearings that uh, that the, that particularly, for example, in code enforcement, that um, the respondent has received appropriate notice of hearings. But this gives us the option, particularly f with respect to lot mowing, where there's a lot of notices that go out that we might be able to save in, in some costs. Okay, so who would be making the decision then whether or not it has a return receipt? Well, I think, I think ultimately it would be the um, city manager with input from the city attorney. Okay. So you're just recommending for the lot mowing or all? No, no I'll, I'm just giving you an oh, okay. example. Okay. I mean, it, 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 there, are, uh, there are some where we absolutely want to make sure that they have received they have notice. Received it. Okay. And others where it's not as, as significant. Are there comments, questions? Mm. All right, this is a um, public hearing. Any comments from our audience? Second call, any comments regarding GA 1014? Third call. Anyone like wishing? to close the public hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Move approval, GA 1014. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve GA 1014. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, the motion passes. Thank you. We move now on to GA 11. 14. Yes, this is also a, the first reading of an ordinance, which I'll read by title only. An ordinance of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, amending Chapter 8A, City Finances, Punta Gorda Code, by amending Section 8A-16, Competitive Bids and Proposals, to increase the competitive sealed solicitation threshold from 25000 to 50000 providing for conflict and severability, and providing an effective date. Do we have any comments? I, I would like to um, uh, point out the way that the code presently reads, um, it, it has a heading uh, bid threshold. 
and I think that kind of gives the implication that th that would be the starting point for the value. But I, I thought it might be helpful to uh, add a couple of words um, uh, in that existing paragraph. Um, and, I, and here's how I would have it read. It says, all purchases of commodities or services in the amount of $50,000, and I would insert the words, or more, shall be obtained through the competitive sealed solicitation process. If you read it literally, someone can make the argument that the only ones that we can send mm -hmm. out are ones for $50,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, I would agree I with that. I agree with that. Is that a, mm -hmm. a, a unable? All right, this is a public hearing. Are there any comments regarding? Uh, please come up to the uh, podium. Uh, I'm Bob Toth, President of Seminole Lakes Association. My only comment on this, what is the reason behind the increase from 25 to 50,000? Sealed bid procedures I'm very familiar with are not that complicated and they do protect <coughs> many vendors. Do we have any comments from staff? Mm -hmm. We sure do. Marion Pace, Procurement Manager. Um, I respect the comment, and a lot of the re responses we get from vendors is how complex the sealed solicitation document is. We will still be competing, but at a, like a formal quote threshold where the uh, documents are not as complex, we have a little bit more flexibility, and we will not be removing the competitive solicitation process. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Rachel. And we're also um, in line with other uh, government agencies, their threshold. So we were a little bit under, so we decided, we discussed it at the last council meeting, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yes, and Nancy. I think um, also, uh, Bob, this, the current, Bob, the current threshold, the current threshold, oh, <laughs> the current threshold was established back in the 80s. So we have not updated our threshold in a long time. Okay, this is a public hearing. Any other comments, questions? Third call. Move to close public hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Move we? approval of GA 11-14 with 50, the wording of 50,000 or more inserted. Second. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve GA 1114 with the modifications. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, motion passes. Thank you. We have no uh, quasi-judicial public hearings. Uh, we do have an ordinance, a resolution. This is just an ordinance and um, um, this would be the opportunity to solicit public co comments uh, on the ordinance because it is not a public hearing. Okay, is there any comments from citizens regarding uh, PD 0114 regarding the senior housing, the verandas, yes. For the record, Terry Tubb, zoning official. I did want to clarify, I noticed in the agenda packet, uh, the uh, exhibit B was not the most recent. Uh, there was minor revisions as to the uh, perimeter sidewalk as well as some of the interior amenities that were included on the revised exhibit B. This is the exhibit that was um, put on the record at the first reading for this. And, but, I, but since the agenda packet had the uh, original exhibit B, I did want to put that on the record. Do you want to just put it on? Would you display it, please? Thank you. So if there's any public comments that have been prompted by that change, we can entertain them now. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and read the uh, ordinance by title. Okay. Are there any comments on this? Can you point those out again, please, Terry? Uh, the sidewalk is more meandering uh, on this than it was on the original exhibit B. The reason for the meandering was due to elevations of the property. Um, additionally, uh, you have the interior uh, walkways, a small patio at the rear, um, overlooking the lake area uh, as part of the amenities, and these were not shown on the original exhibit B. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Would you like to read it now? I will, thank you. 
So this is uh, PD 01-14, uh, an ordinance, second reading of an ordinance, which I'll read by title only. An ordinance of the city of Punta Gorda, Florida, amending the conceptual site plan previously adopted as Exhibit C to ordinance number 1592-09 for the development of a senior affordable housing rental neighborhood and related amenities commonly known as the Verandas, located at 24500 Airport Road, Punta Gorda, Florida providing for certain modifications to the regulations applicable to the development, providing for conflict and severability and providing effective date. All right, this is a uh, second reading. Are there any questions or comments? No. Move approval, 0114. It's, is there second? a second? It's been moved and seconded to approve PD 0114. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes, thank you. We now move into the consent agenda. And we will accept any citizens' comments on our consent agenda, which includes the city clerk's department, the approval of minutes, our legal department, uh, urban design division, uh, the submission of environmental solutions for a community's grant. And those are the items under the consent agenda. Are there any citizens' comments? Seeing none. Move approval of the consent agenda. Second. Moved and uh, seconded to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. All right, we move into our regular agenda. And again, we have citizens' comments on our regular agenda. And this includes our budget reappropriations for 2015. Under new business, we have our business development plan and action items. We have the City of Art web portal design and hosting. Uh, we have discussion of the special residential overlay district to allow pergolas to be located within 20 feet of a waterway or golf course. We have discussion regarding minimum and maximum setback requirements in the neighborhood residential zoning district. We have discussion of grasses and shrubs on US 41 North and South medians of, at Seminole Lakes. Discussion regarding elimination of the city's local preference policy and also uh, the city representative for the Charlotte County Restore Act Advisory Board. If you wish to make a comment on any of those items, now would be the time. Good morning. I'm uh, Tom Hamilton. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, uh, web portal for the uh, uh, that's culture eight. within that's number B on your agenda. Okay. Uh, I'm a former uh, president of the Visual Arts Center and I was the originator of the proposal uh, for the uh, web portal. Uh, this started out as a uh, project for the Visual Arts Center to uh, provide a, uh, uh, a single point of, of, uh, for all visual arts within the uh, uh, city of Punta Gorda. Uh, it has uh, grown a bit uh, to the point that we're now talking about a, uh, a central point, a, uh, uh, think of it as an a, uh, electronic yellow pages uh, for uh, the humanities uh, within uh, the city of Punta Gorda and uh, uh, Charlotte County. Uh, the uh, idea is to, uh, for citizens or for visitors, for people considering coming to uh, Punta Gorda, uh, people within the uh, area of Punta Gorda, to be able to go and find a single place where they can learn about the uh, visual arts, the uh, performing arts, history, uh, uh, potentially writers, poetry, uh, poets, this kind of thing, would learn about uh, anything associated with the arts within uh, uh, really the county. Uh, because, and we're viewing the, the city as being the primary point. Uh, that we're actually looking at, but uh, we also have uh, uh, resources outside the uh, city that would be included in this uh, web portal. Um, uh, excuse the, me. Yes. Uh, what is your expectation from the city? The expectation from the city is that uh, we would actually, uh, the city would host the uh, uh, site on their uh, new uh, CMS or content management system. Uh, we would, uh, they would, the uh, city is going to be responsible for 